This which follows is a log of tactile, embellished notes made in response to meetings between Sarah Roberts, artist, and Beth Wilnuff, scientist, for the advent of Leeds Creative Labs 2019-2020 Bragg edition. Notable point one. Things matter to them both. S. Things in pound shops shudder when I look at them. B. Pound shops make me shudder. S. I'm imagining a rubbish dump spread like beef paste across pushed up pavements. Plastics and chicken bones squished in like a fucked up jam roly poly. Crammed with time into rock. A sort of unsavoury immovable feast. On their first date, they talk about the Anthropocene. The artist is the daughter of a hoarder. She feels implicit. She's concerned and yet appears assimilated. She is a five foot eight and a half inch tapestry of pound shops, clay and mountains. A fibrous beast buckling at the knees about sinkholes. She sees her clamouring sculptures multiplying in the studio teetering on a drawn line and the scientist's atom sort of bouncing around below it. Microscopic, spectroscopic, undone. The once seeming raw materials of her craft are suddenly flash fried before her eyes, as processed as chicken nuggets, all overcooked and ropey. They discuss the matter of the surface in depth. Everything feels slippery. They are clutching at their sides. Each can only reach so far past drawn lines. Two index fingertips, almost touching through skin of a balloon. Pop. These two are peering in from flip sides of a cocked up looking glass. Through the material they seem to get along on many levels. They chat about stranger things. Outside, the conversation continues. Fake grass and carpet covers piles of egg timers, hair clips and Tupperware. Billions of bits of fast fashion, throwing things away at the heart of the matter. An atomic, energetic dance of new dirt, tempered by contextual choreography, perhaps. Bouncing. They know, of course, there is no such thing as a way. She is looking around the lab at the moments made human, the finishing touches. She slips them into her handbag for experimenting later on. Notable point two. One must touch without touching. They talk about tact and abstinence. B. How can you be a practitioner of materials and not want to touch? They talk about health and safety, Derrida and Jean-Luc Nancy. It all starts to make sense. The scientist in her lab sits in her orange chair wearing gloves that rest in her lap, green doused in acridity. She is palpably longing to touch things. She rests her eyes on the valance through the glass on the screen looking hard into the matter, turning stuff into energetic dust before our opened eyes. Particular, photogenic, incredible. Prior, on the flip side, the artist in the studio has her hands in milk and honey, toxic green and orange, making the unbreakable. She is trying to hit a point of touching with her eyes and guts, both easing and amplifying her pit-bellied, buried worries. Here she stops, at the surface. Aesthete idiot. Anthropogenic. They both read Lydia Davis with the blue pulp cover. The words are edible, short, patterned. It's hard to contain now, this jumble and the fissure that this is all creating in her brain, this weird science that's actually making sense, the upside down. They have 
both probably worn lycra at some point. They both lived through the 80s after all. It feels a bit like that. Stuff in a thin skin. Snap. Notable point three. Smooth state. Today they get to talking about this smooth world of denial we find ourselves in. Phone screens and contouring, swiping, groping for information and attempting connections. They talk about a web summit and a robot that can love. Immaterial materials, delicious developments and a synchrotron running 24-7 for £24,000 or something like that. They listen again to a podcast on touching, discussing bodies and building blocks. Later, the artist watches Stepford Wives again. She will recommend it to the scientist. Our fingertips are presently happiest, sliding on jellied edges and soft screens. Swiping right, we are left delightfully satiated. Our bones are buried deep in our digits, our lips fat and generic, popular. Life is a pressure cooker. We need to get our machines on at the start of each day or it's chaos. The scientist puts a lid on her coffee. No drinking is allowed in the lab. The last sip is touching, all the way down. Bottom is up. On re-entry, her lumbering machine groans a sci-fi neon grumble in the corner, or a belch of practically human proportions. They rub along nicely, squeezing around defined corners. When it breaks, the silence is deafening. She takes the matter into her own hand and fixes it. The machine stops, sometimes. Notable point four, Friday afternoon experiments. They speak about vibrant matter, about Friday afternoon experiments. Under the scope is an underbelly of landscapes and lines that cannot be further broken, peaking. There is a hair in the machine, organic interference slowing their progress. Feeling carbonated by this breakdown, the artist reaches for the water that isn't there, thirsting. She longs to know what she's touching, for an awareness of what she's done. There's an accompanying dread, burying her face in the sand and the plaster. There is, it seems, a mutual urgency of undoing in their work. They are neither looking for anything, but that which is found. They have gained everything this way. Ready. I like to be surprised, they say, with the ardour of lion tamers getting swiftly to work.